Hello everyone. It is June 1st, 2021. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. It's a beautiful summer day, first day of June, and I couldn't resist and I decided I'd take my harp out and do a little Harpist in the Wild episode of Harp Tuesday. So, of course, Harpist in the Wild has been wrapping up. Season 2's last episode it happens this Saturday. And if you haven't already, go check that out. Remember, it's on a different YouTube channel. So go and subscribe to that one if you haven't. And yeah, I'm just feeling like I want to get outside here. So I'm going to show you a, a lovely piece from the first harp book, maybe Prey's first harp book, uh, called Night Song, which is fairly early on in the book and is a great example of chords. So I'm going to be adapting it for my little electric harp, which at the moment I'm just playing acoustically, so you can hear it does make a little bit of sound. And the piece itself then would call for an A below the A that I have. So I'm actually going to simplify it even more and the left hand is just going to keep playing this A. Normally it goes A, 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 A with a lower A. So let's start by just talking about the right hand. Actually, you know what, first let me play it for you. Oh sorry, let's try it again. So beautiful, and of course you could repeat it, it's very short. And so let's talk about what the right hand's doing. So for the first half of the piece, this top line, it's playing chords, two notes at the same time, and these type of chords are called thirds. And on the harp it's really very clear why they're called thirds, because if we count the first note, this C is one, two, we're not playing the D, three, we're playing the E, a third apart, right? And something to remember on these thirds then is keeping the finger low and the thumb high, because often the tendency, especially when you're first starting, can be in, in, in an attempt to play two notes at the same time, we end up kind of pinching, because normally if we're trying to do something with both the thumb and the finger, we're, we're, we're grabbing, we're pinching. But in this case, keeping that same normal thumb motion of wrapping on top of the finger, let me turn so you can see that a little bit better, and the same nice closing motion of two, keeping the finger low, Closing right into the palm with all, all fingers operating as one big finger. And so you can do that, right? Practice the thumb, practice two, and then try to keep, even in, in that moment of trying to play them both at the same time, keep that same motion that you did as individual fingers. And it might be that it, it's challenging to have them both happen at the same time. Um, it might take a little bit of practice. And of course, we'd like to hear them both equally. Don't, we don't want to hear lots of the bottom note or lots of the top note, but some of both of them. So some great practice. And of course, you can also incorporate a little bit of a raise as well. So all we're doing are these thirds, except a couple single notes. So we start with a thumb on the E and two on the C. Three in a row away. So one, two, and one, two, one and two, one, two and one, two, one and two. And notice that the second half, the first three bars get repeated. Bars four through six are exactly the same, except they're marked softer, right? Marked pianissimo, the double P. So it starts out piano, somewhat soft, and then even softer. And that can be really fun to experiment with. And what can be good when you're experimenting with the dynamics is sometimes to start by exaggerating it. So maybe we'll play the first three bars quite loud. And then really soft. Just so that it doesn't end up all kind of being the same volume to get that experience of what it feels like to have that, that sort of dynamic range. Um, so again, and the, and the rhythm, right, the rhythm then, we have this quarter note, and then eighth note, eighth note, quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, quarter note, right? So one, two, and one, two, one, and two. So we have this first chord twice more and one more time. So four in a row in a sense, but slightly different rhythm. Down one string down another string, 
and then the B that's in the middle of the A and the C, right, the previous chord. Let's add the left hand in. So left hand is actually more complicated in the original when we have that lower A when we have to switch back and forth because even though the right hand repeats, because the left hand is doing one, two, three, well, now the next group of three is one, two, three. So a little bit tricky that way, but in this case, it's, it's quite easy because it's just that A. So each downbeat, one, two, and one, two, one, and two, softer one two and one two one and two great let's look at the second half then the second line so this is a little bit trickier because of the chord the right hand's playing so now the chord in the right hand is being played with a thumb still but this time with a third finger because it's a six so again if we start from the bottom note this f one two three four five sixth string up so this is a little bit harder to easily see, right? A third is very easy because we just skip a string, right? That shape is very easy to find. A sixth can be a little bit harder, so it can be really good practice to just practice playing consecutive sixths, or even just practice playing a sixth and say, looking away, and can you come back and find that with your eyes closed? Can the hand start to open up to find that shape of the sixth? Again, thinking about closing the thumb, wrapping the thumb on top of the finger, trying to make sure that two is not up like this in an effort to be out of the way, but it's just relaxed. So the back of the finger can almost touch the strings. We don't need to really bring it way in here, and we don't need to bring it up here, but just let it relax and, and kind of loosely hang down here. And then the third finger is closing with a fourth and the pinky right into the palm, get a nice purchase on the string, nice and low. So again, not a not a pinch, but a low close and a nice wrap around. And this you might find harder or you might find easier than the thirds, but you might quite likely find it a little bit different. And so then with this, right, we're just going and then down, 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 down. And then we play our single note, the E find that same chord we had before, which was the C and the A, and go back up, and almost repeat. So here's our starting chord, right? The F and the D, down, 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 E, C and the A, but now we play a G and end on that C and A. So the ending, that last bar is just slightly different. So let's do that again. Two and one, two, one and two, one, two, and one, two, and here comes our ending, one and two. And again, notice that the first time it's mezzo forte, so medium loud, and then the last time it's piano, and there's a decrescendo, that's what this funny little thing often called a hairpin means, and it ends with pianissimo, so it ends very soft. So let's try it with the left hand. Softer, getting softer. And we might take a little bit of time at that end, right? Dum, dum, dum. We could we could play around with with having a nice, beautiful ending. Of course, if we we're going to repeat it, we might go. Whereas if we're going to the final ending, we might kind of draw that out. So lots of things to think about. It's a lovely little piece. So of course, for just getting the mechanics of it. I think it's a great one to practice the right hand alone on those chords, add the left hand, and then especially if you have that lower A, there's that extra level of coordination of going back and forth between the, those two A's. So a beautiful piece, and I hope you've enjoyed this little trip out into the, the wonderful uh, wilds of, of Victoria, BC, and these beautiful forests. And um, yeah, definitely remember to check out the final episode of season two of Harpist in the Wild this Saturday. And I will see you in two weeks' time for another Harp Tuesday episode. <laughs> Cheers.